As part of an ongoing conversation about education, the role it plays in our lives and the role it will play in our future, I'm honored to speak with a living legend, Dr. Farooq Elbaz. What role do you think education plays in all of this? When I was a kid in Egypt, I had a great education. My teachers were well educated and they really knew what to do and we had great respect for them as individuals and as teachers. And so the education system where I, that resulted in me and my cohorts was a very fine education system. Since the revolution, things had kind of come to pieces. During the past 30 years specifically, the government just forgot that educational system. They forgot at all. And all they wanted to see is a building a school, building a school. We built a school. Never mind that. Let's see who can teach. Let's train them very well. And what the material that reaches these people is in what? If they even sit in a, in a, in a, in a, in a backyard, that's fine with me. If they can be educated in, a, on, in the field, that's fine with me. So if I can educate through the phone that this person already has, that is a much easier, a much better, a much more, more uh, pro profitable uh, uh, way to do it. And naturally, e-education is a new thing, uh, and, and it it's can be a fabulous thing, because in Egypt there is not enough schools, there are not enough teachers, not enough material, not enough books, you name it. And if we can find the mechanism to convey knowledge or courses or topics to people at all kinds of levels, at all kinds of, of ages through a, 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 a mechanism like an iPhone or a, or, or, a mag or a computer, it's a fabulous thing. Or to convey to them, to those who can read, information about what's happening in the world, it's a fabulous thing. They don't have to read what the local government newspaper tells them. They can see other things. For instance, the book of Jules Verne, From the Earth to the Moon, and the illustrations showed that there were three men that went into a spacecraft that had a shape which very much like the Apollo mission. It went to the moon and so found a lot of rocks. And the three people that went to the moon, according to Jules Verne, kind of became dizzy because of the difference in gravity between the Earth and the moon. And all of these things kind of were, became reality. So he wrote this 200 years ago, and but he, the, the ideas that he proposed became a reality. So meaning that the human mind can initiate all kinds of thought. And I took these pictures to the Apollo program directors. The Apollo program director said, my God, we all read these books. They must have affected us, affected even the designs subconsciously, meaning just reading that book may have affected the shape of the mission to the book. EDX is a fabulous project. And Linking with the Library of Alexandria is a wonderful thing because the Library of Alexandria is a, fa is a fantastic place that has very young people like yourself that are running the show and they're all excited about new things. From the pyramids of Egypt to the moon and to Mars, Dr. Farooq took us on a trip through history, through his journey, and gave us a glimpse of the future. On behalf of Dr. Farooq and Michael Armanius, for Arlington Public News, I'm Akriti Jagmohan.